Hey, Kat here from Standing Stone Kennels, and I'm here with Bob from Lone Duck Outfitters and Kennels in New York. Hi, hey, Bob. Hey, <laughs> thanks for coming. Yeah. So we're getting a new lab puppy. Hopefully you've been following along with our YouTube channel. And if you don't, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of these videos. But we're getting a new lab puppy and we had to figure out what we wanted. You know, how do you know if a lab's right for you and what do you consider when you get a lab puppy so we are going to go through the things that we considered and that you should be considering too when you're getting a lab puppy absolutely so first things first not every lab is created equal and actually in the labrador breed there's different segments and it's kind of split off which is weird and different and is what it is there's an English lab or show dog. There's an American lab like Memphis, and that would be a field bred lab. Um, and then there's even like a British lab. Um, and they do have differences. So that show lab, generally speaking, is going to be a little bit more relaxed, a little less crazy, a little less athletic and need a little less uh, from us as owners exercise wise um mental stimulation wise they're just a little bit more calmer and that's a generalization but that's pretty good yeah and you think about it too i mean they've been bred to be show dogs then so less emphasis has been put on hunting and right. so if you're looking for a dog that you want to take out hunting all the time that show dog might not be the right dog for you because it hasn't been bred for generations to be necessarily the hunting dog. It's been bred for other characteristics. So you got to think about the purpose of the dog you're looking for, what your goals are going to be as an owner. Absolutely. Do you want that just, you know, laid back, really easy family dog that's friendly, happy-go-lucky? Or are you wanting the dog that can do that, but also be a great hunting dog? Or do you want a dog that can go and compete at high levels of um, competitions and tests and you know, you've got to decide what your purpose is when you're getting a puppy. Absolutely. And so when, when I ask this question to people and they're like, well, he's, he's going to definitely be a family dog, but he's going to hunt as well. My suggestion is still buy a lab with proven hunting pedigree, right? So you've got hunt tests and field trials in their pedigree with parents who are successful because you're going to still make it a great family dog. So where if you just get a lab that's a family dog you know, out of the newspaper or whatever, it may not like to swim. It may or be- Or retrieve. Or retrieve. I mean, even though they're a Labrador retriever. It may have been bred out of them over the years where they just kind of don't care or they like it for two or three and then they go lay down. Yeah. So if you, most of us nowadays are looking for a family member that we can hunt with whether you hunt two days a year or 60 days a year, you know, that might change a little bit of what you're looking for, but it's going to be a great family dog. That's just a good Labrador. Yeah, is. Labs are great family dogs, super friendly. Right. But then make sure that you've done your research to, to have proven parents in, in the hunt test and field trial games. And then once you know, okay, I've decided what my purpose is for getting a lab. So for example, Ethan and I, we want a lab puppy that we can take to really high levels of excellence, um, go Absolutely. hunting with. It's going to be a great part of our family. We've got a little boy, 20 months old. So we want all, we want the complete package. We want all the things. So then it's a matter of finding the right breeder, the breeders that have the same goals for their program is what we're looking for. So right. you got to do your due diligence. You got to do your research and find the right breeder, just not a lab breeder. Absolutely. So a breeder who has an understanding of pedigrees, um, and what I mean by pedigrees, and, and there's definitely a negative connotation sometimes where like, ah, I bought a dog 20 years ago for 20 bucks and he didn't have any paper. But well, it was the best dang dog I've ever owned. I, we hear that every we once hear in that a while. All the time, <laughs> right? um, but you have to, when you're looking for a breeder, they've got to have some savvy with the pedigrees and who the parents, grandparents, and great grandparents were. What did those dogs accomplish? And then that breeder, how are they pairing the mother and father and what attri attributes are they trying to pull? You know, we're, we're definitely trying to create good looking dogs. We're trying to create smart dogs, intelligence. We want to create a, a team player in a Labrador. 
Um, we want to make sure that they're still athletic and that they're healthy. Healthy, yes. Healthy would probably be number one. You yep. know, you're, you're breeding a really healthy animal for people. Which is um, the ethical thing to do. You should be producing puppies that are going to be healthy, that can still do all the other things, but isn't going to break down in the field on you. Um, right. Because they're not put together per- perfectly or have the health clearances that we're talking about. Exactly. So the next segment is once you find that breeder and and you're looking at litters, they should have those health clearances. And so for a Labrador retriever, these are kind of the main ones we look at, okay? Hips. Their hips should be x-rayed through OFA. That's the 90, you guys do OFA or do you do We pen do hip? pen hip. Okay. So there's two different ones. It doesn't matter. All you're doing is making sure that the hips are, are looking good. Um, hip dysplasia is definitely common. And my old dog actually has hip dysplasia and his parents were excellent hips and good hips. So it was kind of a freak incident, but you know, I did my research and it's just cards fell the way they fell. Yes. Um, but hips, elbows, and those are going to be through OFA as well. Do you guys do elbows? So elbows are through OFA, not through pen hip. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, we have EIC exercise induced collapse and CNM central nuclear myopathy. Okay. And these are genetically tested through like a cheek swab and sent away. And if a dog is affected, it's going to be affected by the disease. So an exercise induced collapse, the dog's running through the field, all of a sudden it gets hot, temperature goes up or temperature and they go down. Okay. Not good. No, definitely not. So that would be an effect. Wouldn't dog. actually be able to probably hunt that dog. No, yeah. or train. You have to be yeah. super careful and you definitely don't want to breed it. Well, back in the day, we didn't know what it was. so Or how to test for it and how just, to pair dogs up that yeah. didn't have it. Exactly. So it got passed down. Now we know and a good breeder who does these health clearances is going to test and make sure that we're breeding. Parents are either clear of the disease or clear in a carrier at the maximum. Like you Right, can't. and then you wouldn't pair that carrier with another carrier or you'll get half carriers half affected right right um so that's both of those diseases are you're looking for clear or at the worst a carrier and that that a carrier doesn't mean they're a bad dog like you shouldn't listen to this video and be like well i don't want to have a carrier right it just has the gene like you have brown eyes so do i you carry a brown eye gene what color are your son's eyes brown hmm Right. Brown. Right. So you might have blue, but because of you and Ethan, like you just had a brown eyed kid. Right. So, um, well, I guess maybe that analogy is helpful, but you don't have to worry about the carrier because it doesn't. It's not affecting the dog. Right. You just want to be super conscious if you think you want to breed in the future. Which is a whole nother thing. Oh my gosh. That's a whole nother episode. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But we can move on from there. Um, You want to make sure that their eyes have been done. And that's kind of the main one. The main health clearance issues that you want to look at when you're looking at a lab. Yeah, and picking the right breeder. So those are kind of the things that I'll ask someone. Um, Now, another common one would be coat color. People get really hung up on that in, I think, any breed. controversial. Yeah. About to get real here. (laughs) It's about to go down. So in the AKC and in my heart, there's three colors of a Labrador. Chocolate, yellow, and black. Black is the most dominant. Uh, So there's more black labs than the other two. Um, And that's sometimes there's like an old stigma that black labs are better than yellows and chocolates are the dumbest. That is that is like a thing. Okay. All right. In general, that's not really true because they're all a lab and you could have all three colors from one litter. Well, you just had a litter. And we had black. That we're getting a puppy out of, right? That's right. And we're getting a black puppy. But like you said, it's dominant. So you had 10 puppies. Eight of them were black. Two of them were chocolate. Right. But they're all they're all litter mates. They all are genetically the same other than their color. You know, same mom, same dad. So the intelligence is going to be there, whether it was the black puppy or the liver puppy. They're going to have different personalities because they're not carbon copies of each exactly. other. But it's not, it's a stereotype to say black dogs are the smarter dogs and the chocolate ones are dumb. Exactly. I think there is a little bit of, there's so much, uh, so many black labs out there that the probability of them excelling more 
is more because there's more. A bigger sample. A- exactly. Now, I'm not a scientist, but that sounds legit, right? Well, you've got a lot of experience, though. That's right. Now, let's talk a little bit about silvers and champagnes and whites and... Fox red. Fox reds and charcoals. So, well, whites and fox reds are just a yellow lab. With different coloration, like... It's just a variance. Paler yellow. yellow, darker yellow. Yeah, you could have a litter of all yellows and some of them are more white. Some of them are yellow and the other ones are darker red-ish. But that's a yellow lab. Right. Okay, so a lot of people will get hung up on this color and be, um, you know, marketing that we had a fox red litter and charge more because they're darker red. I would be weary of that breeder because they're breeding on color. It's still a yellow lab, so I'm still thumbs up on it versus a charcoal, a champagne, or uh, the silver. Now, these are dilute genes. This is a recessive mutation, and breeders who specialize in these colors are only breeding for coat color. Selectively breeding for coat color and only looking at that silver color and not looking at any other attributes. Like intelligence. So that they can continue making more silver puppies. Exactly. They're not As a fad type of, hey, I want a silver lab because, you know. Designer thing. Right. right? So they're not worried about intelligence. They're not worried about health clinics. They're not worried about hunt testing and, and all those things. They're, they're just worried about making three grand a puppy instead of a thousand or whatever um, because it's a designer thing. So be really like, listen, I'm not slamming silver labs because if you have one, I guarantee you love it just like I love my dogs and I respect everybody to do whatever they want. And it doesn't mean the silver labs still can't be a nice hunting dog, a nice family dog. Exactly. But it means it was being bred just solely based on a color characteristic. And and so I would shame the breeder, not the owner. That would be my thing. Same with if you have a litter of yellow labs. And like you said, there's some that are the fox red color. And the breeder said, well, I'm going to charge double for that fox red. Same litter, same parents, same yeah. genetics, but because it's a highly sought after coloration, it's going to be worth more than the rest of the yellow labs in that litter. Yeah, I don't like that. So yeah, so that w- those are things that would be like a little red flag for me if I'm l- researching breeders. Um, and then the last question that we get a lot is boy versus girl, male and female, what should I get? I think you need to worry more about like the breeder and the pedigree and the parents and and then the color and then sex right because for me i've had males and females I don't, i'd like your opinion on this actually we get this question a lot too um yeah. with short hairs you know they're dogs everybody wants to know right are the females more affectionate than the males are the males right. harder working than the females and my response to people is always no i've had high charging females yep. and I've had hard charging males and I've had sweet males that want to snuggle in bed with you every day. And then I've had, you know, super sweet females that want to snuggle with you in bed every day. So it's Memphis is, Memphis dreaming. is dreaming. That's so cute. <laughs> um, so then it's more about the litter than male versus female. Right. And our biggest thing is usually your males are going to be bigger. Right. Females are going to be smaller. I think females mature a little quicker. And maybe you've seen that. I think it varies more on litter to litter. Okay. But I dig it. But overall, I think you're looking at different characteristics of the males are going to generally be bigger. Females are going to generally be smaller. Um, Now, Memphis, she's a big girl. But, (laughs) you know, in general. She can't hear you because she's she's, asleep. She's dreaming. It's hurtful. Um, And then you've also got to think about um, heat cycles and, you know, males with testosterone and so those are things to consider so if you've got you know already an intact female at home and you don't plan on having a litter getting an intact male you're gonna struggle when eats come in you got to keep them separate and things like that so those are things to consider right and you know i had a a friend of mine one time he said females come to heat once or twice a year males are in heat 24 7 (laughs) and i kind of get that right right so that is another little thing. Like they're going to pee on things outside all the time. They're going to have, I think they're a little bit more like stuck in their ways sometimes because they got something else on their mind, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And so I do actually prefer a female. I love, I love them a little bit differently, I guess. 
And uh, so if someone were to ask my opinion, I do like girls more, okay. but I don't think you're right or wrong for getting either one. So that one to me is what do you want? Your preference. Yeah. That is your preference. Boy or girl, it's not a right or a wrong thing. For sure. So those are some really great things to be considering when you're planning on getting a lab. So just a quick recap, we had what is the purpose of the dog that you're looking for? You know, you want a couch potato, hang out with the family. You want a hard charging hunting dog, finding the right breeder then that's breeding towards those goals that you have. Then that breeder should be doing health clearances so that we're breeding healthy dogs. And then don't put so much emphasis on, you know, coat color versus ability. And then also, Male versus female, it's personal preference. You're not gonna have a smarter dog, a more cuddly dog. It's right. personal preference. Absolutely. So great. Thank you for talking to us about labs. <laughs> We're excited about our new little lab puppy. So make sure wait. that you uh, check out that series that will be coming out and check out Bob. He's gonna have a bunch of training videos as well coming out on labs um, and retrievers and all the drills and things that we don't necessarily show on our channel. So we'll be pointing you to his channel. Um, but I'm Kat the Dog Trainer. And I'm Bob from Lone Duck. Thanks for watching.